know you cry every night Put up it all in the sky And I'm a burn one for you Do you suffer from anxiety or depression? I have suffered from anxiety and I also um, have a colleague who, su who has suffered from anxiety or who is still suffering from anxiety. How do you treat it, if you treat it at all? Uh, usually I just find time to myself and I go and think about everything that happened and try to find a way to fix it. I just try to find happiness in the middle of the day. Learn from the baby, uh, smile in the person, uh, characteristics. Not me personally, but I know some people who may treat it in unhealthy manners. Like, I know some people who may drink. Um, I know some people who may um, take prescription drugs. Um, I know some people who may smoke cigars to kind of treat their anxiety. What do you think some triggers may be for people's anxiety or depression? A lot of stressful events, multiple times. Uh, it's been stressful events, like one after another. <laughs> death of my grandma. Well, for my co my colleague, it was triggered because she was robbed. And um, she was robbed right in front of her house. So that causes her to have anxiety because she no longer feels safe in her home, but the options to move are kind of limited. So, uh, I'm going to Trigger, stress can be a big trigger, um, life events. So a lot of times before people experience a period of depression or anxiety, there's an event that happens that can spiral. So say for somebody who has social anxiety and they have to speak in front of their class at school, then what that the event is the class and then they become anxious, they become worried, they stutter when they speak. So usually there is an event that happens before people start to feel symptoms and also reminders of the past so things that have happened in the past or different experiences that people may have had that influence you know the triggers that happen. With being a black teenager do your parents help you with your mental illness? But if I ask they'll help. Yes. Other options outside of school, like sports. How do mental illnesses go undiagnosed? Mental illnesses go undiagnosed for a variety of reasons. Um, one, it could be a cultural thing where people aren't necessarily attuned to the different ways that mental illness manifests. Um, I will also say access, so some people might not have access to get to a therapist or a psychiatrist or a doctor. And then the last thing is, um, I would say, education around like what a particular mental illness looks like and also acceptance. So coming to terms with the fact that something may not be, um, may not be right and being able to accept that someone might need some help. And then the last thing I'll say particularly for um, African Americans and other people of color is discrimination. Um, so there are some people who might go to seek help and then someone discriminates against them and then they're like, well, I'm just not even going to go any further with seeking mental health care. I say that because so many times being a part of the re religious African American community, a lot of people tend to say, well, um, you must not be doing something right or you must not be living right with the Lord. Turn to God, he'll, he'll solve all your problems. When um, there are certain problems that need to be addressed that, um, while religion can solve those problems, but it's like, well, okay, this God that you're talking about may have, may have a therapist that this person could go to. So there's a, there's a, a negative um, impression of going to therapy or going to seek help, or it may be kind of seen as a sign of weakness. So just that whole perception is, is something about it. And I, I think a lot of times in the African-American community, um, 
I don't know if it's that we have to be strong. We we feel like we're weak or vulnerable um, because of it. So I, I think that those those are some factors that we may feel like it's in some ways our fault or we can conquer it without having to turn to outside supports or services. What are some treatments for anxiety? Uh, treatments for anxiety, uh, thought logs are really good. So thinking about the different thoughts that come about um, and being able to unpack those thoughts that could impact uh, symptoms. I will also say some other uh, strategies that are good is exposure. So there are some therapists that do exposure therapy where they put people in the situation that brings them anxiety and then um, they have to you know, be able to work through it. And then the other part that I would say is um, doing assessments and different things like that, assessing things that will happen that trigger the anxiety and being able to work through different strategies to prevent um, the increase in symptoms of anxiety in the future. So be true to you, they don't know what they say And they don't know your secrets And they don't know about when he took your life away